Hello there, and welcome to Alvarez's Diecast Customs. Today we're going to be working on this Hot Wheels Mazda Repu. It's a great looking little truck this one. I'm hoping to go with sort of a drift truck look for it. Try something different with the paint job. And also try some of that clay that I used on the Hoonicorn project a couple of episodes ago. So let's take a closer look at it. Quite a nice paint job to begin with, to be honest. It's one of their better ones, I find. Nice grill there as well. Some lots of detail there to pick out on it. Typical plastic base. I've already taken the time to drill the posts out. Start off with a two mil drill bit, work up to a five mil. As you'll notice on the rear one, I haven't put a screw in that one because it's so shallow. You put a screw for it it would literally go straight through the bed of the truck so we're going to have some plans for that ahead of head of the video we'll do something about that there's the interior not too bad got the truck bed attached to it too good clear window keep that as it is there you go you can see that post at the back there very shallow literally no room left for it to put a screw into it. A little bit rough on the front there too. So we'll just get on to some paint stripping. I use this basic sort of paint stripper, pop it in a pot, shake it around for a little bit, leave it down for about 30 minutes to an hour. And after that, it's all ready to come off. Just wash it under the tap, scrape the rest off with an old toothbrush. This is what you're left with. This was also after a quick wire wheel and a quick wet sand using some sand in sponges. I also just drilled out the excess of that post there. So I'll be putting the screw straight through that. I'm just going to be using a little Sharpie marker just to mark out where I want to remove some material on these arches. So I'm just marking out the fronts and rear areas there, just for a rough guide for where I need to file. I don't want to remove too much. I use these diamond files, just gently work at those sections that I need. So after a little bit of filing, as you can see, I've removed the archways on both those sections there. Also on the other side, tried to smooth them out as best I could using the files. I also removed this sort of tab that was sticking out on that piece there. We we'll need that out of the way later on. So I'll be using this Milliput Superfine Epoxy kind of putty. Comes in two parts. You need to use equal parts of the materials and then mix them together. We are, I cut sort of small discs out, roughly the same shape and size. Just work them together. Spend about five to ten minutes kneading this stuff together just to make sure it's fully mixed. Because they're the same colour pieces as well, um, it's very difficult to tell if they're fully mixed, so just keep going. Longer than you ne longer than necessary, maybe. Just going to be applying some of it to this, working around the archways of it. Going to be using more material than I really need. It's always best to have more than you need because then you can start working the excess off. Just gently molding it to the shape I need. And there we go. 
So after a bit of time, just fitting all those bits of clay to it, have a very rough shape that I can work with. I let this sit for about a day to dry off. So the putty fully cures, so it's easier to sand and scrape down. So it is fully hardened. I'm going to start off with a good sharp scalpel. Just remove larger chunks of the material where I don't need it. Namely around those archway pieces that I filed out earlier on. It's very easy to work with once it's hardened. Also use the files again, just work my way around the arches, smoothing those out. Just slowly chipping away at all the material with the scalpel. Also use a bit of smooth sandpaper and just get a really smooth finish on the outsides of them, just working around them. There we go, as you can see, evens everything up. Start removing some of the top piece of material now. Start really shaping the arches now. This is what I came up with at the end of it. So after a while longer, just clearing everything up, making sure each of the arches match with each side. Just trying to get a really clean look to them. Just test fitting with the uh, original chassis and wheels. Just making sure there's enough clearance for the wheels. Won't be using these ones, of course, but they're a good sort of guide. As you can see, those archways really go over the wheels on these ones, so we're going to need some wider ones. Hold on a sec, who the hell are you? New one? Ah, oh, Supersonico. Cool. What's that you got there? Nice. These are looking interesting little wheels. They look like they're actual metal. Nice. Let's have a look at these then. rubber tires over the top of them. Quite nice looking wheels. Comes with a set of axles as well. So these are the axles and pins that come with it originally. They're very tiny. Smaller than the standard Hot Wheels ones I think. There we go, just slot that in there and then you slot it into the tube. It's a slight issue with these for this current build. I won't be using these axles with it. As you'll see, the wheel freely slides up and down these axles, which does not work for what I need it for. So I'm going to need use my own axles. So what I've got is some standard Hot Wheels ones that I've clipped off of some old wheels. So you can see they're a bit fatter. They also go through those holes just right. Just be using those. And I'll be using my usual brass tubing that I use for some axle builds in my previous videos. This allows me to add width to the wheels. To how much I need and they don't slide around. As you see you would just pop that tube with the axle there and the wheel stays put, doesn't slide up and down it. 
and the wheel also sp spins freely. So onto the body. I'm just going to sort out that rear piece now with the the bed. I'm going to be covering it up with a cover. I've just got this off cut of plastic card. Just sizing it up. So use some sharp scissors just to cut this to the size I roughly need. Needs a bit of fentanyl in to get it to fit neatly. As you can see, see, not very well fitted yet. Just grab some sandpaper and start really grinding this down. slots in quite nicely and this in turn also covers up that screw hole that I've had to make I also just used a bit of super glue just from the inside run it around to glue that piece of plastic card in and now I'm just going to fill in some of the small gaps around the top area with some Vallejo plastic putty just using my finger just to fill that in. Once it's fully hardened, I go over it with some emery cloth. I'm also going to be making a front scoop for this thing. Just roughly sizing up of off cut of plastic card again. Gonna need to remove some of the material on this base, however. I use my diamond files for that. Just going to clip these wheels off because they're sort of getting in the way. Where I need to file. I don't want to destroy these wheels. I may use them in a future build because they're not really, they're not actually that bad to be honest. These ones, quite like those ones there. We'll just remove those. There we go. I can really start working, getting a channel there to fit that front scoop on. Just size it up again. You can see I've just rounded the edges off on that piece of plastic card and get the idea of what I'm going for there. Just test fitting again, multiple test fits throughout the whole build really with this, making sure everything fits correctly before I commit to it. Just put a dab of super glue on it, both sides of it. And I get that scoop. Perfect. So I'm also going to make some little exhaust pipes for this. I just clipped a small amount of uh, interior plastic away from the base there. Just so I can send these out through the bottom areas of the chassis. Just use my brass tube that I used for the axles. Bent it slightly. Make sure they match. There you go. I'm going to be putting them around there. Just use some usual gel super glue blob of it on there. Just gently work it to where I need it. Good thing with this gel super glue, there's a bit of a longer working time that you get with it, so you can move things around a bit more, a bit more flexibility. Also, it doesn't run everywhere and make a right mess, so it's much easier to work with. There you go, you get the idea there. Little exhaust pipe poking out the bottom there. as I've put those new exhaust pipes coming out the sides there I've removed the original plastic molded ones on the rear of that chassis no longer be needing those I also made a little plastic card spoiler cut that to fit and super glued on so after a good primer and a matte black paint this is from the Halfords range it's pretty much the only paint I use, to be honest, for these. And start going ahead with some more detailing. You also hit the base with it, 
of the bat plaque. And the interior I went over with some grey primer. So I'm going to be using this Tamiya masking tape. Be masking off the bonnet on this as I want to retain the colour of it being black. I don't want any colour, other other colour on it. So just place that on. Use a scalpel to cut down the bonnet lines. Peel that off. Took off a little bit of the black paint on the edge there, but that's not to worry. We'll be covering that over at some point. finish off the rest you go as you can see there's the bonnet fully covered I'm gonna be making some sort of design from what I can so I'm gonna be just slicing this mask and tape randomly in sort of stripy patterns using some of this and just randomly sort of apply it to the body Making it cut, sort of look like a tiger stripe design. I'm going to spend quite a while doing this. Chopping up bits of masking tape and gently applying them. Trying to keep in the same sort of direction for most of it. Some very small pieces. There we go. That's what I came up with at the end of it. So these pieces that I've masked will remain black. So I can go over it with a colour. So these parts that are visibly black currently will be painted. So what I came up with is a gum metal fade into a metallic blue from the front. Just slowly remove that masking tape. And you start to see the pattern reveal once you start removing this. And there it is. Quite happy with how that came out. So we'll just do some extra detailing before we go ahead with extra things on there. We'll just be using some Ravel aluminium. Just picking out some of the door handles. Other little bits and pieces on it. As these will be sealed under a clear coat, it's always best to do them ahead of that. Also do the indicators there. And the rear tail lights. Also do the chassis while we're at it, painting that bumper. Picking out all the raised areas for the chrome areas. Just give it a bit more detail. Do the headlights too. Just going to be going around the windows with some Molotow chrome pen. Just breaks up the solid sort of colour 
to the body there. Gives a bit more brightness to some sections. Just carefully go around those windows. There you go. So after a good clear coat, it's only had one good coat of it to begin with. Because I'm going to be using some decals. I haven't used these for a long time. Must have been over 10 years ago when I used to do some Tamiya plastic kits. They always drove me mad. Always had trouble with them. Well, there's where I got the decals from. Got them off eBay. Came from Australia. They appear to be a very good quality. They come with uh, this set that I'm using uh, white backed. So the actual coloured areas show up as they should on dark colours. I also got a set of transparent ones which I'll use in, on a future build. So I'll be using this microsole just to ad help these decals to adhere to it. Just apply these. Show you how I did it on the rear one. Just dip them in the water. Dip them in there for about 10 seconds. And then I just place them onto a piece of tissue, let it sit there for about 20. At which point the decal should start sliding clear off the paper. So I'll just apply some of that micro sole to the part where I need to put the decal onto. Using my tweezers, just work it off. Use my finger just to slide it off onto the area I need it. Minor adjustments just to keep it straight where I need it. using a q-tip or a cotton bud just gently roll we we'll just sit those down and let that dry for a while and there's the base just put in those axles that I was talking about. I split them just to give me a bit more leeway for side to side width differences on it. Is that interior? I'm gonna have to give that a good paint. Let's go over it quickly in some areas with the Ravel Aluminium. Also just pick out some of the details on the chassis too with the same paint. That's that interior after a bit of extra detailing. There's that chassis. Did some extra details on the base there. Also went over it with some Citadel Nolan oil. And there's some extra detailing on the front there. Just going to go over the interior as well with the Citadel Nolan oil. This really gives some good depth to everything. There we go. Let that dry off. It's ready to put this thing back together. It's an interior after that's all dried up. I also painted in sort of the wheel wheel areas in some black paint because you can still see those through the wheel arches on the actual car. But darkening them up makes it look a bit better. The chassis also got the Nolan oil treatment. A few coats of that over it. And there's our window. Didn't really do anything to that really, just a quick polish. We go pop them all back together. Using my usual five mil self tapping screws to screw the base back on. So before I reveal it. Let's take a look at what we started with. 
as it was. It was a great looking little Hot Wheels Mazda Repu. Just felt there was uh, something I could do else with it. Great looking little truck, really. Anyway, let's take a look at what I got. And there we are. My own little Mazda Repu Drifter. It's quite an interesting task with the decals on that. Quite frustrating to use at times, but you know, it's all about learning. Be interested to see what else I can do with them later on. I also went over this with a good clear coat. Did a couple of coats on it just to seal everything in, make sure those decals are nicely in there. Let's just take a quick closer look at him. As you can see he rolls quite nicely on those wheels. It's a nice paint job. Quite impressed with how that came out. Literally, it is literally just from rattle cans as well. It's all about how you mask it off. The results you can get out of them. And the blending the two colours felt worked out really well. Definitely something I'm going to be trying again. Try to get a bit of camber on those front wheels. I wanted the, the back ones to sit a bit higher. And the front ones to look sort of squatted down. And also tilted inwards slightly. Gives it quite a sort of aggressive drifter look to it I find. So there we go. I hope you liked it. So we're just going to pop back to Super Pochaco and Super Sonico and see what they've got for me next time. And what's that? Nice. Let's have a look. It's a Mercury Cougar. It's a Matchbox. Very cool. His wheels look a bit strange though. Definitely have to do something about those. Great. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to say thanks to all my subscribers and the comments I've been getting. It's all really been very positive recently. It's just another great encouragement for me to keep doing this. So, yeah, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.